Since its foundation, the Gaelic Athletic Association has evolved into an international amateur organisation, promoting indigenous Irish sports. But it's much more than that. It's also front and centre in our cultural and social life, both urban and rural, and holds a special place in Irish hearts, wherever they may be. I'm here at Croke Park, the iconic headquarters of the GAA, to remember the most tragic event in its history, Bloody Sunday. That's a hundred years ago now, on a very dark day that proved pivotal in the War of Independence. This GAA museum exhibition remembers the 21st of November 1920. That morning, the IRA had assassinated 14 British intelligence officers. Later in the afternoon, British forces arrived at Croke Park. Dublin was facing Tipperary in a Gaelic football match. There were probably about 10,000 people in attendance here. The match was only underway about 10 minutes. And there was shooting broke out that probably only lasted about 90 seconds. It was 90 seconds of mayhem. And after the 90 seconds, the shooting ended, 14 people lost their lives and over 70 people were injured. Of the 14 people that died in Crow Park, they were all civilians. Um, there were three young children and there was um, a young woman um, who was due to be married the following week. So this case here has a lot of personal items that belong to either people who were in attendance on the day or some of the victims. And I suppose one of the standout items um, in this display is this coat. This coat was worn by Tom Hogan. He was from Limerick. He was only 19 years of age. He came to the match in Croke Park. He got a bullet wound in his right shoulder and unfortunately Tom Hogan was passed away. He was actually the last victim of Bloody Sunday. And actually in the pocket of the coat there was um, a box of cigarettes and a box of matches. So very personal items that belonged to Tom Hogan. This whistle was donated to the museum several years ago, so we actually had this on display in our, our, our previous smaller exhibition and display on Bloody Sunday. Um, the referee on the day was a Kildare man, Mick Salmon. He was actually an inter-county gifted footballer as well himself. Um, so this, yeah, this is believed to be the original whistle um, that he used here on the day. The only player to have died that day was Michael Hogan. He was age 24, he was from, from Grange Mokler in County Tipperary. He was the cornerback on the Tipperary team and um, Michael Hogan that day was um, due to Mark Frank Burke who was considered to be one of the big stars of the Dublin team. He was a dual player at the time as well. This bootlace was actually given by Mick Hogan to his teammate Bill Ryan just before the match here in the old dressing rooms in Croke Park because Bill Ryan's boots weren't fitting properly. And Mick Hogan had a spare lace and he gave that spare lace to Bill Ryan. And Bill Ryan kept that all his life. And his daughter um, kindly gave that on loan to us for the exhibition. So we're very grateful, in fact, to all the families who've given us very personal items that they've held in their own family collections, if you like, um, for a long, long time. And they've been kind enough and generous enough to lend them to us for display in this exhibition. This is such a unique place. It has so many memories for so many people. But perhaps the most tragic of all happened here at this corner, the corner of what we now call Hill 16 and the Cusick Stand, because this is where Michael Hogan from Grange Mogler died 100 years ago. The events that happened here on Bloody Sunday have cemented a relationship between the GAA as an organisation and this pitch and venue here in Crow Park. And I think, you know, it'll always be remembered where we lost 14 of our people who went to a match and never came home. In three weeks' time, on the 21st of November, it will be the 100th anniversary of Bloody Sunday. There were ambitious plans to hold commemorative events on that day, but due to COVID-19, these plans have had to be postponed and a small wreath-laying ceremony may take place. What happened here at Croke Park 100 years ago sent shockwaves throughout Ireland and the wider world. The football match, where random spectators became targets of the Crown Forces, was a key event in the War of Independence and resonated through Irish history. But in the century that has passed since that fateful day, great strides have been made in putting the past to rest and in building new and lasting relationships 
with our closest neighbours. And the GA has played its part in that process. This evocative and poignant exhibition, which will hopefully be available to the public again soon, ensures the memory of the player and the 13 fans who died will never be forgotten.